seems like it's been a while. <laughs> Continuing with the uh, Scientology, um, I think this is the one where they uh, are talking about all that they do to try to uh, make celebrities feel real welcome and all. And uh, which I, I guess is it's good timing for us because that's with the new Top Gun, their number one celebrity is Tom Cruise. And they do anything to keep him happy. They'll break any rules just as long as they keep him happy. He's their face, so to speak, of Scientology. So we'll, we'll get started here. Could we do a prayer? Yes, thank you. My brain is somewhere, but... <laughs> thank you, Father, that you have given us truth and that you have protected, protected us from so many things that could have happened to us. Thank you that you've given us your word and we can see what's in mankind and not be deceived or led astray. We thank you that we are your sheep and we hear your voice. Uh, open our minds that we can understand and find ways that we can help people who are lost in false systems. In Jesus' name, amen. There are decisions in life that really make a big impact, not only on us, but on our children, our children's children. Um, and this is for good or for bad, of course. Uh, you give your life to Christ, He promises to uh, never leave us or forsake us. He promises to give us a life, a life more abundant. He offers us His guidance through His Word, through His Spirit, and uh, it is for good and not evil. Uh, there's a lot of little things that that come out on these and uh, for instance you know it was all for the church it's all to protect the church. Any comments about that? I have a lot of good feelings of this congregation and all I give it all up for Christ. It is not the church, it is Christ. That has to come first. Um, it's a matter of uh, ultimate priorities and Christ should come first. Um, and you'll hear people, you know, you'll hear um, you know, the Pope when he was uh, talking to cardinals and whatnot and giving them instructions and stuff, he said, you are working for the church. <laughs> no. You're working for Christ. And if in working for Christ you can help believers, that's fine. That's wonderful. But you're working for Christ. And to make a decision, uh, if you had to give up the church or Christ, which would it be? Everybody probably say, oh, well, I'd give up the church, you know. But in reality, that's not necessarily the truth. And uh, we don't go out selling a church. There are believers in all different flavors of churches. And uh, the important thing is that we know Christ and that we let Him set us free and live a life abundant. It's hard to be deprogrammed from things you've learned from infancy. But everybody has a mind that matures and eventually usually it starts in our junior high age we start to question things uh, I've read many things from many people who are pretty impressive Christians and how they strayed so to speak from church and Christianity because <clears throat> the preacher wouldn't answer the question Well, what about uh, whatever it might be? Well, why, why is it Good Friday? Uh, little questions, nothing major, you know, type thing. But, and oh, well, don't worry about that kind of stuff. That say, 
Well, no, those are questions that need answers. It's rational to answer those questions, and there are good rational answers. Um, and those that are uh, pushed aside, their questions don't end. And that doesn't satisfy everything. There are some people who kind of twiddle their way through life without asking any big questions, but most of us want to know some answers. And uh, we want the truth. Uh, and those uh, questions should be answered in a respectful uh, way and in a way that uh, is in truth because we're people of truth. We have a word of truth. Uh, and so we shouldn't be afraid of truth. Uh, some of the greatest minds in the history of the world have been followers of Jesus Christ and they applied themselves and how freeing it is to know the living God. I think of this young man who committed suicide at such a young age and but not, you know when I see graduates from high school at 18 or whatever I say you go ways to go <laughs> because you know there's a whole lot more to learn about life and relationships and all but you know you're you're happy for them they got that far safely um, and the Lord can uh, what he could have done what the Lord could have done for that young man uh, if he just and you know everything was intentional with what he did he committed suicide on Hubbard's birthday that wasn't a coincidence and um, what a shame selling off that land well you know the church is pressuring you know where the money's going yep. and yeah. you know they're pressuring her oh, to sell, sell it I never thought of that you're right yeah um, you know I bet if she wasn't just like mad at her daughter I'm going to sell this land this, mm -hmm. I'm sure she was getting internal pressure also to say what good you can do for Scientology with the millions upon millions of dollars that that land would be thousand there, whatever acres yeah. of Oregon forest would bring. Yeah. Hmm. I was thinking that exactly, the exact same thing. It's just like, I mean, granted that her mother was no mother, and she was, but still, I agree with you that it, it was just an excuse. I never once thought that. I thought she was just a spiteful woman. <laughs> Well, sure <laughs> <laughs> you have to be, but she, you know, yeah, I'm sure there was more to it than just yeah. Or even if there wasn't, you still know where the money's going. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, you just connect the dots with all the other programs we watch, and you figure out pretty quick, you know, what's going on here. Um, and of course, her mom is going to have to be more totally devoted to Scientology because the alternative is disastrous for your mind. Look what I've done to my family, to my son, to everything. No. Then you have to double down and just be locked in even more. But you know, we've, we've talked about people that we've had on these programs here where they're past retirement. They have nothing. They have nothing. They have nothing to live on. And 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 as far as the church is concerned, well, that's your problem. It's very sad. So there are a lot of people who need help. Uh, we shouldn't be afraid of people who are there to help. We can always say, you know, if we go to a psychiatrist and we're not being helped, go to somebody else. You know, there's a lot of alternatives. If at first, carpal tunnel doesn't work. You can go somebody else and try it. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, but the fear they uh, engender in people to not believe anything that is said or done in psychology, strictly out of bitterness, Elrod Hubbard, because they didn't find his teaching 
and his methods to be worthwhile. And so he just going to, in his anger, make sure everybody rejects psychology. And you know, you can read any history of psychology and find people that are wacko, you know. Uh, there's no question about that, but there are a lot of people who do a lot of good and help a lot of people. Uh, we live in an age which something can be done for our mental illnesses and, and our troubles. And uh, for a young man like this who committed suicide, that's a perfect kind of person who needs that kind of help. And who wouldn't be emotionally in grave turmoil, their father dying on them? Gone. And that was really the only connection he had with the family because she was gone all the time doing Scientology work. Yeah, it'd be tough for anybody. He was also put in a tough situation to go there so young. I really have a problem with that, with anybody. 15? Yeah, you're not ready to face college <laughs> at 15. Well, and you're not certainly not ready to face it alone. Right. No 15-year-old should be lived, living alone. Yes. Yeah. And then 16 years old, he's out in L.A. I guess our daughter was out in L.A. when she was 16, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. <laughs> my bad. Yeah. So what do they do with their elderly people? Because would you you have to pay into Social Security to get right. Social Security. So yeah. What do they do with old Scientologists? You just keep working. Well, I mean, when do you get to the people when you're the point you can't? I mean, you physically can't work or anymore. Well, what do Scientologists do with their old people? And there's the door. It's, it, I know that the, the, the few that we've seen, that they were too old to work, and they weren't of any use. But, and, and many of them stayed and stayed and stayed. It was all they had. You're talking about people in the Sea Org. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? I'm just talking about any any general old person that's all well that's worked with Scientology, so they don't have they haven't been paying. Yeah. So that would be in the Sea Org. Because you don't. Yeah. I mean, what do you do? With them? They have a celebrity center. Maybe they should build a old age center. That is a good question. But how, how could you do that because it's going to solve all your problems, Scientology, and you're not going to have any problems, and you can deal with everything. And you can do miraculous things. So you don't need a nursing home. Why would you need a nursing home? Oh, why would you get yourself. sick? Yeah. You can heal your own self. To me, those seem like the self-evident deficiencies, you know, of, of it that, uh, well... L. Ron Hubbard, he died. <laughs> he had a stroke and died. And he was sick for a long time. He was, he was sick for quite a while, yeah. And if anybody could use Scientology to heal themselves, you would think it would be him. But, and of course, that's what, why you have to have an elaborate ruse, you know. Well, he discarded this body because he has other work to do. Well, and you know they didn't tell anybody that he was sick. No. They didn't tell anybody he died of a stroke. Yeah. They just, I don't know, you know, figure he just sort of... He chose to leave. He chose to leave. Yeah. But... And you know, he's coming back. He, he's just, you know, you know that they didn't share that. That, that wasn't no. common knowledge. But it's been brought up several times people say, no, wait a minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if it didn't work for him, who would it work for? Yeah. Anything else? Well, Bonhoeffer was, of Germany was, uh, you can parallel some of the things uh, of the German church and, and what he did and how the, the violence was against him and mm -hmm. he found himself in jail very quickly after. Yep. And uh, there was no Hitler was not uh, giving any quarters to anyone that opposed him. Yeah, that's right. The, the parallel is very similar. And, and there's other cults that are just 
just like this. You either believe the line or you're, you're outside the line and we don't care for you. You're and disposable. Help you. Yep. And uh, Germany had two, two church lines for a long time in the latter part of mm -hmm. Hitler's reign. The one that compromised everything and the other one that held the line and uh, they were the enemy, the yep. real church, the people that believed were the, uh, the real believers. And uh, the, there's no question the thing is false. And I think our conscience many times tells us what's right. Mm -hmm. uh, Sure. If, if we if our conscience is not warped, and uh, these people were led along this path into the, into the continual way in which they had no other belief, and, mm -hmm. and uh, because they everybody were, out there is evil, yeah. and also he, they the church was enforcing a lot of the rules, and uh, it was uh, similar to where they could enforce them. It was like Bonhoeffer's problem. Uh, he was a bad guy, and, and he, no one was going to help him. Well, there were a lot of people that helped him. That's different, a little different. Yeah. He had a way out, and his conscience was clear when he, I'm sure, when he was killed. Uh, yeah. Uh, he had no regrets. But uh, this, when, when you have something that's false, that totally doesn't stand on anything, it's mm -hmm. one of those straw. Gods that we sometimes look to, yeah. And there's no substance there, and there's enforcing. They're enforcing the people, and once they get hooked into the system, they're hooked like a fish, and they can't get away. Well, you're in a society, and it's it's your country, it's your community. I know that a lot of people at Bonhoeffer uh, taught. In biblical studies and all young people they had to go to war they were forced into the army yes and they had to follow the orders and uh, yeah and, and you're there's a lot of things that we can get trapped into uh, if we're not careful uh, one of the things I do want to mention and it it, it, it parallels some of these things we're talking about but Being a preacher, I'm not exposed to a lot of profanity. <laughs> it just doesn't happen, you know, type of thing. Uh, but profanity is a big thing in society. Very big thing. And uh, Luther was, uh, the last 15 years of his life, he, they, a lot of people wrote a lot of bad things about him, but, but he was very, very profane extremely profane. It wasn't like he was just, every other word was, a, was something bad. It's just that uh, if he saw something that was wrong, he would attack it verbally with filthy language. I mean, filthy language, because that was of the devil, and the devil deserved every bad word you could say to him. And Melanchthon, who was a theologian who worked with Luther, and uh, one of the closest to Luther, at his funeral, uh, he apologized for the last 15 years of, of the uh, verbal uh, tirades uh, that Luther got into, which is kind of interesting. And God used him in spite of that, you know. Uh, it's not a matter of clean up your language and you can receive Christ. Uh, it is a matter of the grace of God. You trust him, he takes you, period. And what, how freeing is that? You know, now certainly uh, out of appreciation for Christ, we might want to clean things up, or because we can be pretty offensive to people in society, and just respect for others and respect for kids, you know, your mom and whatnot. Uh, maybe you want to kind of tone it down. Everybody can, uh, it, they're able to, but uh, that's not a qualification for salvation. Um, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but by His grace He saved us. Okay, anything else? Say a prayer. Thank you, Father, that you take us as we are 
and you love us and you give us eternal life. Help us to have compassion for people trapped, trapped in false systems. May we look beyond the words, may we look beyond the hatred or the animosity and see their need for Christ and give us the words that we might help them find Christ. You're the one doing the saving. You are building your church. And we ask that you, through our life, penetrate people's souls, that they might know the truth and that might set them free. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.